In problem one, we're asked to find the geodesics on a cone whose equation in cylindrical coordinates is z equals c rho, with parameterization theta as a function of rho. We'll begin by noting that in Cartesian coordinates, the infinitesimal arc length ds is the square root of the sum of the squares of the infinitesimal lengths in the x, y, and z directions, and that we can convert between cylindrical and Cartesian coordinates with the three equations x equals rho cosine theta, y equals rho sine theta, and z equals c rho, as given in the problem statement. Using the chain rule, we can differentiate these three equations and obtain equations for dx, dy, and dz. If we square these and add them up, then after some simplification, we get 1 plus c squared times d rho squared plus rho squared times d theta squared. We can then put this into the square root and factor out a d rho squared which will come out of the square root as just d rho. Here, theta prime is just d rho theta by d rho. To solve this problem, we'll use the calculus of variations, which allows us to minimize a specified integral. In our case, this integral is just the arc length integral, the integral with respect to ds, where we'll replace ds with the square root from earlier. We'll treat the integrand, the square root of 1 plus c squared plus rho squared theta prime squared, as a functional of theta, theta prime, and rho. We'll use the Euler-Lagrange equation, which says that the derivative of the functional with respect to theta is equal to the derivative with respect to rho of the derivative of the functional with respect to theta prime. This equation allows us to solve for a function theta of rho, which will minimize the arc length integral, giving us the shortest path between two points. First, we'll note that we have the special case that f does not depend explicitly on theta, which means its derivative with respect to theta is zero. So df by d theta prime is equal to some constant, which I'll call d. If we take this derivative, we get rho squared theta prime divided by the functional itself, and that whole thing is equal to d. By separating the variables and integrating, we see that theta as a function of rho is the integral of d times the square root of 1 plus c squared divided by rho times the square root of rho squared minus d squared with respect to rho. We're told that we can leave the answer as an integral in rho, so we'll stop here for now, but we'll keep this integral in our back pocket. In the second part of the question, we're asked to show that if the cone is unrolled into a circular wedge, the shortest path becomes a straight line. If we unroll the cone, we immediately notice something interesting. Even though the angle of the cone goes around a whole 2 pi radians, the central angle of the wedge is clearly less than 2 pi. We can understand this a little better if we look at the distance along the wedge, r. If we look at our cone from the side and pick a point on it, we can visualize a right triangle where the distance from the vertex to the point is r, which has a horizontal component rho and a vertical component z, which is equal to c rho. Then r becomes rho times the square root of 1 plus c squared. At any value of rho along the cone, the circumference of the circle with radius rho should be equal to the arc length along the entire wedge at the corresponding value of r. So rho times the angle on the cone, which I've called theta c, should be equal to r times the angle on the plane, theta p. From this, we can find two equations that allow us to readily convert between angles on the cone and in the plane. Here's our integral from earlier where I've replaced theta with theta c, since we're on the cone, and pulled out the constant. If we replace theta c with the expression we just found, we can divide out the square root of 1 plus c squared from both sides. It'll be easier to show this is a straight line if we evaluate the integral. Doing so, we see that theta p is equal to the arc secant of rho divided by d plus b, where b is another constant. Then, using the relation between Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates, we can rearrange this to get an expression for y in terms of x. Since b and d are constants, this is of the familiar form y equals mx plus b, or a straight line. There's one more thing we should keep in mind. From the relationship we derived earlier, the central angle of the wedge is 2 pi over the square root of 1 plus c squared. If c squared is between 0 and 3, then the central angle is between pi and 2 pi, in which case it's possible that the path between our two points will be blocked by the gap that's made when we cut the cone. This isn't really an issue though, since the cone's radial symmetry means that it doesn't really matter where we make the cut. 
If we fold the cone back up and cut elsewhere, we get our nice straight line back.